how every morning starts. Cup of coffee. And away we go. Hope you enjoy the video. All right, so we've got our pilot bushing in. We've got our new flywheel on. I'm gonna go ahead and make an attempt at getting this thing put on. I'm not rightly sure which bolt holes to use. I guess we'll start with that one. Kind of awkward to do by yourself. That worked pretty well. Now let's see if we can get another one. And there's two. Uh, we're in the downhills. Downhill right now. So this is a McLeod clutch, or McCloy, depending on spelling. Not rightly sure. This is what they recommended for me. I told them what I was doing and what I was trying to put together. Now basically, this is a silly car, as we've already discussed. I'm really not going for any quarter mile monster, but it would be nice if it uh, does a good burn up. So that's what we're hoping for. And if it does, we win. Try to get these all started a little bit. And we'll just find the right socket. Blunt crash, boom. I'm still here. Just disorganized a little bit. Now I can only assume at this point started there. I like tightening these up like lug nuts. I go around it. Kind of opposites. So that it draws the fingers down evenly. Anyway, you get the idea. We'll install this. We'll make sure that our input shaft slides out nicely. And if it does, we'll torque the specs, which is 35 foot pounds. Right, and we'll just go around them. No, folks. There she is. Now let's see how we did. Slides in, slides out. Just like that. 
Now we'll get our torque wrench. Torque. All right, so we'll just go ahead and snug these up, give them a torque. And there it is, clutch installed. Well gang, here she is, starting to set in the hole. And to take a quick walk around here for you, get an idea of what's happening. I don't know how well you can see this, but she set back quite a ways. If you consider that this is the axle almost the entire engine is behind it so that's pretty slick she should be interesting to drive to say the very least i got a bunch of caster in it but i got a feeling that uh, under acceleration the front end's going to be quite light like a true gasser so we'll see anyway i've got to pull the motor back out having an issue between the bell housing and the block the last sixteenth of an inch when I tighten it all the way up it won't turn so I've got to figure out what that is I'm thinking maybe just maybe it's because the pilot bushing isn't in far enough but I don't know for sure until I pull it back apart so we'll be doing that but in the meantime today I'm gonna to go ahead and start mocking it up align the transmission output shaft with the differential so I can get that set and then start doing my uh, my engine mounts and all. So I'll be videoing that. You can kind of see how I go about some of it. Once again, the alignment from the transmission to the differential is pretty straightforward. Just need to make sure your angles are very slight so that the U-joints don't bind and it doesn't vibrate. Think about an older CJ5 or a Jeep that's jacked way up in the air and they just crank the pinion up so it matches trying to get the and they drop the transmission down to try and get that angle as slight as possible and it keeps everything from going in an oblong or however you want to say it non-concentric circle maybe and uh, causing vibrations so there's the starts we'll get on it and away we go today okay so what i'm doing now so I have a magic bungee cord here with a string that is centered on the bottom of the oil pan going back across the bell housing all the way to the back. And I'm eyeballing up alignment to the differential. Now, the differential on an 8.8 or a Ford or an 8 and 3 quarter, the pinion is offset to the one side about an inch. So everything needs to be in the right place in order for it to match up so you can move the whole thing over an inch and get it straight there's a few different ways to do it but i'll show you how i'm doing it even if it's wrong so of course we know that the cylinders are staggered on a chevrolet but from the cylinder head to my shock tower here is six and seven eighths from the shock tower on the other side to the same place on the head is seven and seven eighths. So I've effectively moved the motor over an inch. And when you look down the tunnel, 
funny thing is this tunnel on this Chrysler is actually offset to that side about an inch. So that'll make it a lot easier. I'm gonna crawl up underneath and I'll take you with me for just a minute. And you can see, maybe it's pretty, pretty awkward down here. I don't know how well you can see that, but I have a string going all the way to the differential. Can you see that at all? I don't know. Anyway, so what I'll do at this point is just move the transmission to the left or to the right, just to get it in line with the front of the engine and the, and the tunnel, and I should be dead on the money. At least that's the plan. Okay, so what I've done now is I have gone ahead and leveled the engine. So we're now level. I've remeasured side to side. I've run my line straight to the yoke on the differential, centered. I have grabbed my magic tape measure. And knowing that my pinion is offset by an inch, I've remeasured here to six and seven eighths, remeasured to here to eight and seven eighths. I'm sorry, seven and seven eighths. And this is six and seven eighths. So what I get for not doing that. Now what I need to do is I need to take my engine mounts, which these are from Speedway Motors. They come as a kit. And they make a gussety kind of thing. Not quite sure how this is all supposed to work. Obviously, if I do it this way, I gotta drill a hole through the middle. But we'll figure that out. And then these go something like this. And then I'll have to bracket those up and figure that out. I think I kind of got the wrong mounts, but I will have to deal with that because that's what I have. I thought about making them out of some heavy walled pipe. I do not know if that'll work. Of course, one of them fell out already. Right. Well, we gotta get a little fancy when getting it out underneath the car. So yeah, progress is being made. As always, it's slow. Just when you think if you're cruising right along, something throws a wrench in the gears. Hopefully today we can get the motor set where it's supposed to be. One of the crazy cool things, let me see if I can get down there and show you, is the fact that the original Crossmember transmission mount assembly which also held the torsion bars. It just happens to line up exactly where I need it to be for the new cross member. So I should be able to make that much easier with the old piece. Take you for a walk. This is the new mount I bought. It's a kit. Don't need to be near that trick. This is the mount assembly. But I believe that I can cut the ends off of this and put the tubing in place in the middle and have a super simple transmission cross member. That is my hope. I do have some inch and a half, I believe, box tubing. It should work really well for that. So stand by for more. Not trying to bore you. I could put it into time warp, but then you ain't going to really learn anything. So stand by. We'll get some more mocked up. And then I'll uh, uh, click back on and show you what's happening. I want to start this video by saying they are not my welds. So basically what I've done is I've taken my upper bracket from my motor mount. I've set it here, ground it close so that I can go ahead and weld that in. Then there is a big, big gusset that goes in underneath it according to the frame something like this i will have to cut it up quite a bit in order to make it work but that's how she's gonna work 
I have my big light on that side, but you can see the other side is a little bit more wonky because of the steering box. So I've got to put a small piece in here. I'll make a wedge. I can tack it up here and then I'll make my wedge and weld the top in. And then I'll go ahead and make my, my bottom gussets. But you can probably see where they're gonna go pretty good right there and right there. That's an old repair there, apparently from the, what used to be there? I do not recall. It was something important. Oh, that was the back of the upper control arm where the adjuster is. And they had welded in a plate because apparently the, the thing was loose and wallowed out the holes or something. So we get a little welding going and we'll see you in a bit. Okay, so now you can start to see the gusset that I put in, well, the additional piece. I'll get the rest of that welded in. Motor is still sitting level. I'll take our little Hobart welder, finish welding the tops in, and then we'll go from there and start building the gussets. So what we're gonna do here, is we're gonna take our fine gusset material. Probably get both of them out of this. And I'm going to make a pattern of it. Pretty straightforward stuff here. Sharp knife helps a lot. Just like that. I'm gonna make two of those. One for each side, right? Always have some old cardboard around. It sure doesn't hurt. And we still got a tray. Yeah, this one didn't cut quite as clean as the other one. Kind of get the idea here. By doing this, now I can go over and figure out how much of this I've got to remove or how I've got to do it. So I'll take you over there. Let's see what we can cobble up here and see if I can get this tripod to work somewhere up in here. Something like that maybe. So the way this thing is set up is this angle right here is actually designed to go all the way up underneath here and fit right where the bolt is. Well, I'm not the biggest fan of that. I haven't quite figured out. Wow, that is so close. All right, so what I'm gonna do first, is I'm just gonna fold a little bit over in the back. See where that puts me, lengthwise. that in there for just a second. I'll grab some sort of a marker. Sorry about that. But I didn't break out the other microphones. All right, bottom of my frame is here. Come up like that, maybe. I really like where it bent right there. So 
If anything, we'll make it a little bit long. So I'll cut that with a pair of scissors. We'll see where we're at. Put you on pause here quick while I find scissors. Okay, I found the scissors. Kind of rough cut out a little bit of magic here. Let's see, I was going to put my hat on in case there was a reflection in the camera <laughs> from my shiny bald spot. That is really sweet. I don't know how well you can see that. Let's see. Let's take it off of here quick. And that's what we're looking for. Now that'll be plenty strong enough. Can't go up, can't go down. And then I'll just have to re-drill the hole through the middle in order for the motor mount bolt to go through. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other one and then we'll see where we're at. So it's blowing up a storm around here, but check this out. She's in the car on her own. Front mounts are in. They're only tacked in place. I've got to get it up in the air, but you can see that uh, that should be pretty strong. I get it gusseted against the edge. Same on both sides. We will, uh, we should be fine. So there it is. And if you're wondering, how much the front end came down. Well, let me sneak around here, around all my junk. It didn't. So the rake of the car right now, well, you really can't see it. Maybe if I back up a little bit. It looks like I've got the front end of the car jacked up on jack stands or something. So she definitely needs to come down a little bit in the front. The neat thing about this Speedway kit is you can remove a leaf or two and kind of gentle up the front suspension, which is kind of a good thing because currently, wait for it. Now I'm just shy of 250 pounds put an engine in there that, with the transmission that's it guys I don't have to worry about the suspension bottom, bottoming out because well it doesn't move so we'll take a few leaves out and uh, see where she's at I'd like it to be down probably another two inches maybe three but with the motor that far set back which you can really get an idea now that she's totally free. It is absolutely almost all behind the axle. If you can see the axle. It's about under the fuel pump on the front of a small block Chevrolet. So all the weight's behind it. Pretty interesting. I should be able to snatch the throttle and at least bounce the wheels, which I find very cool. We're gonna do some silly stuff too. I'm actually gonna go to Harbor Freight and get a couple of their big heavy duty casters and probably bolt them to the very back corners of the frame rails underneath the bumper, just because it'll look neat. Hilarious. Well, there you go. The engine is sitting now. I'm still on schedule. Of course, I'm way behind schedule, but when I redid my schedule, I figured if I had the motor in and setting by the end of April, I've got all of me to start bolting everything together, wiring it up and all. Another great thing about this whole ordeal, let's see if I can get over there without making an entire mess, is my steering box is perfect right where it sits. The headers do clear. Let me grab those for you, and I'll kind of show you what it's going to look like. I just have to have them.
These are JBA stainless headers. They are a little bit magnetic, but not bad. But check this out. There she is. Got plenty of clearance all the way around. I can actually put them in from the top, which is pretty darn neat. Other side fits super easy. Have plenty of clearance for the starter. I'll grab that one and show you that too. if you can hear all that wind we have a front coming through today it's been raining on and off and blowing like a bitch check that out just how easy is that and how nice and clearance is that there's a reason they made these things into gassers because they were so easy to work on I get it So there you go, another day, a bunch of progress. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull the motor back out, figure out my little clutch problem. Basically what it's doing is when I tighten it all the way to the bell housing, it's binding. I, like I said, I'm pretty sure that I've got the pilot bush and not in far enough. Flywheel is the bigger flywheel, it's 11 inch, seems to clear the bell housing okay. Clutch seems to clear, there's no place where it's touching, it just stops turning, so. I'll get that apart, and then we're going to put the motor in final. There we go. All right, gang. Today is Sunday, April the 30th. And last night we had a torrential downpour and thunderstorms, and apparently a tornado sat down right close to our place out here. I don't know if you can hear the wind blowing. It's still blowing 25 or so. Um... The front end for the Chrysler got blown onto the ground. Hopefully it's not damaged too much. We'll have to see. Um, we got some issues around here. Some stuff blew around. Uh, thankfully we weren't destroyed. Apparently there's a building down just a mile or so from here. Um, everything in the barn is wet. The rain came actually through the... the... Uh, the peak of the roof and uh, so we're gonna have to do some drying out today shouldn't affect anything too awful bad but everything is wet so probably gonna be another day behind trying to get all this stuff done um, but we're gonna plug away the way we do